Hello Indie Game Lovers, Nerds and Nerdess, my name is Phoenix, and this is Indie Game News. Before we start, remember to check the video description for additional information. Today we look at Tycoon Genre. As always, we're going to start with the updates of last month. Prison Architect added multiplayer to the game. Currently works are in the alpha and will improve as the time progresses. You can now build your prison cooperatively with up to 8 people. While in the regular sandbox game of Prison Architect, you can select to go online and host a multiplayer game that people can join. This game can be publicly listed or set to private and protected with a password. When players have joined you, you can see them as marker in the world and you can see the materials and objects that are currently selected and are about to build. This is the first alpha release of the multiplayer mode, with a focus on getting the core functionality working. This means that some features are not currently available to connected clients and developers plan on adding them in the future as they continue to work on the multiplayer. Currently disabled on clients, what will be coming in the near future are wire connections, deployments, logistics, intelligence, emergency callouts, reports, prison grading and graphs. Interstellar Transport Company celebrates a year since its initial release with a new updated roadmap. So far, developers have improved multiplayer immensely, fixing the stutter it was initially causing, added Mac and Linux support, many new ships and many quality of life changes, as well as updated UI to be cleaner and easier to grasp. The game has moved a long way from its initial state, and there is good reason why it, and there is a good reason why after a year it has 10,000 copies sold and the game is sat on the positive 85% positive review score on Steam. Developers are planning to leave early access in February next year, with the following features planned on being added to the game. New tech tree system. New tech tree system with many new ships added to the game. They will be implementing new autonomous transportations using transport hoops. There will be more incentives for players to subsidize the industry. They're planning on introducing the interstellar obstacles and buildable jump gates. Software Inc. Alpha 10 is officially out in a testing branch. Software Inc. is the game about running your own software development company. Your job will be to construct and design buildings for optimal working conditions. You will hire people to design, release and support various software. You will struggle against simulated competition and will be able to take over their business. Alpha 10 adds ability to lease rooms, relocate your company, introduces the new plot system, multi-floor car park, and ability to mod textures. We'll see the overhaul of the hiring mechanics, an employee skill system, new work on the employee satisfaction, and customizable employees benefits. We'll see ability to change the price of your release products, improve the temperature mechanics. Finally, the software is now calculated per OS market. So releasing software for different operation system will no longer compete with each other. The game is sat at 91% positive review score on Steam, out of nearly 2,500 reviews submitted. I myself put over 40 hours into the game and I can really recommend it. Parkitect Beta 10 is now available. Developers have added new bankruptcy system. We'll see smoke, fog and spark effects. Mac users will be pleased that the game uses now metal support, which will improve both visuals and performance. Also, you can now choose to cap your FPS, which may help with laptop users in increasing your battery life. Players will have an option of hiring a second research team We'll see some tweaks to rides. We'll see some tweaks to ride speed and animations. Parkitect first released on Steam early access on the 5th of March 2016. It has gathered 88% positive review score on Steam out of nearly 1000 reviews submitted. Time to talk about the new releases. Mega Aquarium released on the 13th of September. Starting with just a few tanks and the most basic livestock, you will grow your aquarium into Frongi Metropolis filled with hundreds of guests, tons of staff and multitude of different aquatic life forms, each with their own unique care requirements. The game features almost a hundred different marine species fishes. The game features almost a hundred different marine species, including fish, sharks, corals, jellyfish and other invertebrates, and even a turtle. The players will need to decide between training their own staff or recruiting talent from outside, as well as under management policy. Will you run the very focused team? Or will, you, or will everyone be able to do a little bit of everything? The game has received 86% positive review score on Steam out of nearly 200 reviews submitted. The game is particularly praised for its relaxing setting, good variety of stock and mechanics. However, many reviewers have complained about inconsistent FPS, in some cases dropping to low tens, as well as poor UI choices. 
developer is working on addressing these issues with the post-release patches. Parkos Arrows have finally released on the 25th of September. We have been talking about this game for several months now, on and off on this channel, so I will be brief. Parkos Arrows is a Zanin dinosaur park management game that challenges the players not only to provide the guests with the most unique dinosaur zoo experience, but to care for a dino's friends by crafting the perfect exhibits, gifting them with the cutest hats and traveling back in time to rescue them from the demise. Your job as a successful dino park manager will be to ensure your exhibit's safety and well-being. Each dinosaur requires a unique biosphere, which means the shape of the exhibit, material used, ecology, plants, elevation and humidity all play the key role in whenever dinos in the park fry or become extinct yet again. The game has received a 100% positive review score on Steam out of nearly 100 reviews submitted. Many reviewers particularly praised the game for its beautiful, unique graphical style, fairly in-depth management aspect that puts Jurassic Evolution to shame, and clean and functional UI. Game is in the early access at the moment, but there is no reports of any major books so far. Ok, time to move to upcoming games. Development has started on the Democracy 4, the latest iteration of the political strategy game by Positech Games. Democracy 3 was released in 2013 and quite a lot has happened in the global politics since then. Democracy 4 will incorporate the extra features introducing Democracy 3 Africa, which simulated corruption, limits to press freedom and other political phenomena from the extremes which are now starting to become more common in the Western politics since the release of Democracy 3. The game will be completely updated to reflect modern issues, so no more worrying about the V-chip and other long-forgotten issues, and more worrying about the fake news, social media, and other social phenomena driving politics in 2018 onwards. The plan is to roll the content from the existing four expansion packs, extremism, social engineering, clones and drones, and electroneering, into Democracy 4 when appropriate and relevant, to provide a single version of the game. The game is set to release sometime in 2019, with a short early access before the final release. As always, I will keep you updated as we find out more. Ok guys, that's it in this month in the game news. If you know of any other games that should be featured in the next month update or release the game yourself, please contact me at writetofenix at gmail.com or tweet to me at phoenix underscore gaming. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe for more. Nerds and Nerdettes, my name is Phoenix. It was a pleasure to have you here. Take care.